Uh, today I'm going to talk wearing my hat as a researcher uh, rather than UK global food security champion uh, because uh, sustainable agriculture is my research field and um, uh, therefore take anything I say as a personal opinion as opposed to a GFS viewpoint. So <clears throat> as um, Secretary of State has said, agriculture's environmental footprint is utterly enormous. There are a range of statistics up here, about 5 billion hectares of land used around the world and at the moment about 75% of the current gains in agricultural land is driven by deforestation. About 25% of glo glo global greenhouse gas emission is from agriculture and its associated land use change. And in the UK uh, it's about 60% from fertiliser and about 40% from cow burps. About 25% of the world's soils, agricultural soils, are degraded. And we're losing, on average, about 12 million hectares of land per year. And that is completely unsustainable. We're chopping down rainforest in one place, exhausting the land, and then throwing it away in another place. 70% of water extraction for agriculture uh, globally. Uh, diffuse pollution. The European Nitrogen Assessment reckoned last year that the cost of using nitrogen across Europe in terms of human health impacts, terrestrial, aquatic, fisheries, uh, marine biodiversity impacts was greater than the economic gain from using nitrogen fertiliser in the first place. And of course, there's a huge loss of biodiversity and ecosystem services around the world. So agriculture is very, very important from an environmental perspective. And the environment we are recognising, and part of this is uh, DEFRA work, we're recognising is hugely hugely underrated in terms of what it does for us. So this is a figure from the, the UK's National Ecosystem Assessment. And in the right-hand column, that you have a whole range of goods and services that we value as a society. Sometimes we put monetary value on it, and sometimes we don't. Production of food, fibre, energy, drinking water, and so on. But a whole range of other things, pollution, noise control, disease and pest control, erosion control, flood control, and so on. All of these things here, these goods and services we value, are underpinned by issues to do with the way the ecology of the world works. We cannot forever carry on extracting what we want out of the environment without protecting the ecosystem services and processes on the other side of the equation, because otherwise it will not be sustained. And environmental sustainability just means that, making sure that you can carry it on into the future. And as a, a bit of an example of that, this is work from a colleague at Leeds who's been working in West Africa, and he sh has shown that rain, uh, fragments of rainforest, they produce water from their leaves transpiration and they produce a whole range of chemicals that float up into the atmosphere and they create the clouds that create the rain. So if you chop the bits of rainforest down, you lose the pollination, you lose the wood, you create greenhouse gas emissions and you lose the rainfall on which the agricultural uh, world around uh, requires. So valuing the ecosystem services is hugely important, and we're recognising that increasingly. Now, <laughs> this is a bit controversial, given the audience, but we haven't really got a clue, in academic terms, what sustainable means, environmental sustainable, when it comes to producing food and agricultural systems. And that is simply because of the indirect impacts that happen. So if you go out and look at what's happening in an area of production, that only gives you a very small part of what the footprint of the work is. So, for example, if Europe stopped producing food, our environment would be lovely because we could protect it. But somebody else has to produce the food for us. And they would have to intensify as we de-intensified. And that has an environmental cost. So just looking at what we're doing in Europe doesn't tell us about whether or not our land use policy is sustainable. And you have a very, very important role in driving the issue of sustainability. You have the care. And the poster behind me says sustainability is about carbon. Sustainability is not about carbon. It's about biodiversity. It's about land use. It's about water use. It's about a whole range of different things. It's not about local production and minimisation of carbon. And if you get your head round to that, then absolutely you can drive sustainability. And one of the things that concerns me greatly is that there is the potential for sustainable development to be undermined by unsustainable practices driving supply to the northern market. So, um, 
as just as an example, we have a bit of rainforest up there in that picture next to a soy plantation. And as you can see, we can, the, the Sustainable Soy Certification Scheme, the Roundtable on Sustainable Soy, doesn't deal in its sustainability practice with some of the indirect impacts. So we can, with the best of intentions, say we're going to source our soy, our vegetable oil sustainably, but actually the end result of our desi deciding to use uh, soy might be that we increase deforestation rates. And we've got to be very, very careful that our choices in the Northern Hemisphere are not driving unsustainability, because in the, in the end, unsustainable development is not something that we want to encourage. Now, as we know, richer people have a larger food footprint, both in terms of what they eat, the uh, quality of the food and the way it's produced, but also in terms of the amount. And here are two pictures from a fantastic book from 2005 where the photographer just went round the world and took photographs of a weekly food from different families. And it doesn't matter that the, it's a German family, it could be North American, it could be British or whatever. But as you can see, the range of different foods that are eaten is huge, and part of the um, impact of what we eat, it's not just the volume of what we eat, but it's the, uh, what we choose to eat in terms of things like meat being very inefficient to produce. And of course, richer people waste more. In the Northern Hemisphere, we throw away about a third of the food that we buy. And clearly that is unsustainable in the uh, uh, pure use of the word. So richer people eat more, they throw away more. But we also rely on the rest of the world to provide the food for us. And in Europe, where we have some of the richest agricultural land in the world, we still outsource agricultural production to the tune of about the size of Germany, and that is in growing over time. So green beans from Kenya, each bean is worth about a gallon of water. And as Kenya, for example, gets drier and drier and drier due to climate change, in what sense is that a sustainable use of their resources to send us their water embedded in the product up, up for us to put in our fridge and then throw away a week later. And especially as climate change bites, we cannot rely on the rest of the world supplying us the excess food that we demand off them. So <clears throat> I think there are a whole range of things that are, we could talk about in terms of sustainable development. Clearly, the... the um, um, development and what's happening in country is very, very important and getting the uh, uh, developing world to produce food in the way that they need to for their own goods is one part of the issue. But there is also the part of the issue in terms of the way that we make demands on the developing world. At the moment, one billion plus one billion plus one billion, one billion completely malnourished, one billion underfed, one billion like the guy in the, in the boat over there. Overconsumption is a form of food waste, just like buying food and throwing it away. Overconsumption is a form of food waste. And there's a whole range of things that we can do in terms of leadership that will um, help set the world in the right direction. It's not just about how it's sustainable sourcing, it is also about sustainable use. And the Western diet, diet is driving unsustainability. It's becoming aspirational throughout much of the world. And it's, I think it's a lost leadership opportunity. London 2012 is sponsored by Coca-Cola and McDonald's. Don't mind about that. But we don't have a DEFRA Eat Well place, plate sponsorship. We don't have a sustainable diet sponsorship. And actually getting people to make the right food choices is as an important part of sustainable development as developing world itself. So these are the requirements, I think. We need sustainable intensification and we also need sustainable development. We need to address waste, and we have a very strong role that we can play in technology development, leading the way in terms of the whole leadership of this issue, coming out of foresight especially, using our own land wisely, as well as encouraging the developing world to use their land wisely. Okay, thank you very much.